But we see things through the lens of our beliefs. That's all we see. So until you unhook yourself from that belief, you you have a you can only see yourself through that lens gotcha. of I'm not good enough or you know I'm unworthy I'm broken any any of those wonderful disempowering beliefs that we all carry <laughs> absolutely absolutely. Welcome to the Audacious Living Podcast, hosted by my man Audley Stevenson, the Odd Man. He'll unpack wisdom and insights from a cross-section of top quality performers in business, media, sports, entertainment, and lifestyle to uncover key elements to help you live your best audacious life ever. So without further ado, here is The Odd Man. Greetings and salutations, folks. Oddly, Stevenson here, uh, and you've got it locked to another edition of the most audacious podcast you'll find on the internet. This is the Audacious Living Podcast, and I appreciate you for being here as we continue our ongoing goal of helping our listeners live the best audacious lives ever as always i encourage you to connect with us through our social media channels you can find us on twitter instagram and facebook under the handle the audacious pod and then if you head over to uh, youtube uh, and you hit the bell down below in the corner there you can subscribe to our channel it's that easy Uh, and that's how you stay connected to all good things audacious related Now, we'll spend some time on this edition of the podcast talking about self-limiting beliefs. Now, many of those beliefs exist within our subconscious and often can be the cause of of, of why we get held back from certain things. But when we, we learn how to move past those thoughts and beliefs that sabotage us, it becomes much easier to reach the goal or whatever goal that you're after. Now, uh, Nancy Picard is a certified master integrative life coach and a holistic health health, uh, lifestyle coach as well. And she coaches individuals to step out of the fear uh, and step into the bigger version of themselves. Uh, You know, the thing is, Nancy is most passionate about is really helping people become bigger and better than what they are or what they were rather. Uh, really happy to have her join us here on the podcast, and, and I'm certain that listeners will appreciate hearing some of the things that she has to say. So without any further ado, here's my conversation with Nancy Picard. Enjoy. Nancy, thank you for joining me here on the Audacious Living Podcast. It's a treat to have you with me today. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Yes, I, I was looking forward to the chat uh, when we first connected and uh, very much I uh, had an opportunity to, to look at your work as a, as a, a mindset coach and I, I, I actually don't like the idea of limiting you just a mindset coach because you offer so much more. And so I, I think maybe this is an opportunity to get into the work that you do. Um, to, in, my, in my view, it, very, it fits very much in line, you know, what we talk about on this podcast with respects to, you know, encouraging people to be bolder and, and, and braver. And we'll talk about your book, uh, Bigger, Better, Braver because that's very much in line with what we do as well. But maybe we could just start off by uh, telling a little bit about your your, your work and, and, and what you do. Okay, I would love to. So I'm a master integrative life coach and I have many different modalities. I do healing your heart. I do courage. I do parenting. I do reinvention. I do uh, bigger, better, braver. Um, I do boundary work, which is like the sexy thing that people really like to talk about these days. That's a big one. Yeah, yeah it's a really big one. Self-sabotage. And um, but basically, I'm a shadow coach, which means I help people uncover what's in the, their subconscious mind that they're not aware of that's ruling their operating system. Mm. So we all have shadow beliefs. These are the beliefs that were formed in the first 10 years of our life. Right. And they were formed to keep us safe. So as children, they helped us not get hurt or they helped you with an abusive parent or sibling or alcoholic parent, or you got laughed at in school, whatever it is, they were the beliefs that we made 
I'm not good enough. I need to love. I need to do everything to be perfect. Right. I need to be perfect to be loved. You know, um, I'm not safe alone. I'm not good with money. People who like money are not religious. I mean, I, I so many come up, so many come up for for me in my work, but they're all limiting beliefs. And as we get to be older, they actually sabotage us. Right. So if you if you want to be in a big career or you're in an office with a lot of people, but you have the belief that you need to stay silent to be safe, you're never going to get anywhere in your career because you don't speak up because you have this belief and that belief ends up costing you a promotion. Right. Right. So that's right. the kind of stuff people come to me for and whatever they come to me for, that's what I start with because you got to undo that stuff. Yes. You know, if you think your voice doesn't matter, I can't help you set a boundary because right. you won't be willing to set the boundary because gotcha. if your voice and your needs don't matter, how could you ask anybody to do something for you? Gotcha. Gotcha. Kind of it's interesting. I've, I've actually, uh, I've never, never heard the term shadow coach before. So I've learned something uh, new in, oh, in terms of, yeah, no, I absolutely. So I appreciate that. Um, the, the, the piece around that, that, you know, the, the term shadow coach, which is quite clear is that it's unknowingly, right? It's happening. It's something that exists that mm -hmm. we're unknowing that's in our subconscious that that's happening you know, behind the scenes that we don't recognize or realize. And, and, and I'm thinking if, you know, if someone is listening right now and they go, oh my gosh, you know, is there something there that that's holding me back? H how do I figure that out? What does that process look like? Because if, if, if it's not there, you don't know, right? So, so how do you know? Well, for one, you can hire me because I, <laughs> I help you do that. Yep. Um, but if you're not hiring a coach and you're not reading my book, um, You've got to say things to yourself like, what I say I want is X, but what I'm experiencing is Y. You know, I say I want to be in a loving relationship, but right. what I'm experiencing is seeing everything negative with every man I date so that I break up with them before they break up with me. Gotcha. Right. That would be. A, that would be a belief. Um, I say I want a big career, but what I'm experiencing is sabotaging my jobs and losing one job after another. Right. So if you start to see a pattern, you can at least start to see where you, where there is something. Because what happens right. with those beliefs is that not only do we have these beliefs that are in our subconscious we have these underlying commitments. We have these promises that we make to ourselves that support the belief. Right. So for example, I had the belief growing up that I wasn't safe alone. And so my underlying commitment was to be the best girlfriend. So I would never be alone. Right. You know, I would always have female friends and I always had a man because I was dedicated. I had promised myself subconsciously right. that I wasn't safe alone. So I will never put myself in that situation. Got you. What, what I find interesting about that is sometimes these beliefs that we have, uh, they're innocently placed inside of us and we may not even recognize it in the moment I right maybe for 50 years right and it's just we're just we, it's just something that we carry with us and it's that work of uncovering that that i mean we talk about that deep dive in ourselves there's a lot of work to even figure that out because yeah. sometimes making that connection isn't always it doesn't yeah. it doesn't hit you right away right no they're 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 really aha moments mm. that you have with you a coach has with their clients because they're like when you when you figure it out, you're like, wow. Yes. I can't believe that's been like there all this time. No wonder. Like they make so much sense when you figure them out. But they they come from our childhoods. And whether you have a good childhood or a bad childhood, they you you form child Something shadow good, beliefs. Yeah. You can't not form them. Right, right. It's so, the yeah, part, part of, yep, yep, yep. Part of humanity. You. No, I get it. I get it. And it's interesting because, you know, you, you know, you've always got that friend that finds themselves in the same situation 
over and over and over again. And yeah. uh, you know, you're, you're always that's just the way they are. But as you, and so as as we're talking now, it's clear it's 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 more than just the way they are. It's it's part of them because of that belief that's existed probably exactly. from their childhood. Exactly. I I will have people that will say I keep dating the same man over and over and over again, even though I think I'm not but I am. And that's because you're the same woman with the same belief, you know? And if you think you're unworthy, let's just say you have the shadow belief that you're not worthy. Right. You bottom feed, you only date other non-worthy human beings. And then you get to say to yourself, see, this is all I get. Or you date somebody else and then they break up with you. And then you say, see, I'm not worthy because right. You're always fighting for your limitations. Your brain wants to be right, even right. though those limitations are very disempowering. Right. Your brain right. doesn't really care. It only right. wants to be right. Right. So it'll cram whatever information in that little box to say, see, this is what it is. And yes. uh, you know, as opposed to sort of looking at it, sometimes, because sometimes we got to take a, a step back, Nancy, take a broader step and look at the full scenario to understand. So maybe in that one relationship, it wasn't right because it just wasn't right. And not every relationship is going to be right, right, even if we want it to be. Right. But uh, uh, so, but it doesn't mean we make all our judgments and decisions based on that one situation. Exactly, exactly. Right. But right. we see things through the lens of our beliefs. That's all we see. So until you unhook yourself from that belief, you you have a you can only see yourself through that lens gotcha. of I'm not good enough or you know I'm unworthy I'm broken any any of those wonderful disempowering beliefs that we all carry <laughs> absolutely absolutely Nancy what what got you on on, on your path uh, you know you formerly you 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 were in the fitness business for uh, for a number of years and it's interesting because you you you're I would imagine in, in in that industry you're helping people in a different kind of way right. Yeah, I was always helping people. Um, I, that was more like building people from the outside in. Yeah, and now yeah. I help people from the inside out. But yeah. I was doing that then too. The difference between a personal trainer and a life coach is that I don't give my clients the answers. I help them come up with their own answers. Right. When I was a personal trainer, all you had to do is walk into my gym I owned your body for the next hour and I made you do whatever I wanted to do. And right. I was bossy as hell. And <laughs> I had like, sometimes I would have men vomiting because they were, I'm like, what do you mean? You can't lift that. I can lift that, you know, and then they would do it and then they'd be throwing up, you know? Uh, um, so yeah. So it's, it's a softer version right. for helping people, but um it's different than when I was a personal trainer. They're both great, but this is the evolved me <laughs> is is now working with the inside of people. I guess there's a lot less vomiting too these days, right? A lot less vomiting. <laughs> I mean, sometimes, sometimes they cry. That's true, right, right, right. A lot right. less vomiting. And yeah. Um, yeah, it's still great work. And And also people do still, almost everybody who comes to me has body issues anyway. And so I'm putting them on a program. You know, I do holistic lifestyle because mm -hmm. that's how I live anyway. So they get that anyway. They're gonna gotcha. get that even if they didn't come to me for that. Right. They're gonna get that. I, I wonder if you can sort of just explain or define what the holistic lifestyle coaching is, just to, uh, for those listening sure. and have an understanding. So, so holistic lifestyle is, a, is about what you eat, when you eat, how much you exercise, when do you sleep, how much water are you having, how organic are you uh, is your food, um, how often are you in different time zones, like all of these different things make up your 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 life, your body. Right. So right. it's not just um, how much can you exercise in a day, right? It's everything. It's every aspect. And so when I when people want that, I can put that with the shadow work and then they're really getting a totally um, integrative picture. And, like, 
and it's a nice actually combination the two uh, uh, in terms of the balance that you provide. So I think that's a, right. a, a good connection, if you will. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Oh, good, good. Uh, let, let's talk about bigger, better, braver. Um, it's a book, but it's also sort of a, a way of life, so to speak, and and what you teach your clients. I wonder if you sort of expand on it because I tell you what what I, what I what I love about the title uh, is it's, it's bigger, better, braver. It's suggesting that there's more, right? Like sometimes right. we get caught into where we are, and, and perhaps we might think this is all there is. Uh, but that title suggests that there's a whole lot more ahead of us. It's never all it is. It's never, you're never done, right? You're never done. Um, so when I was turning 60, I wanted to do something that was really outside my comfort zone. And I wasn't a great, even though I had uncovered the belief that I wasn't safe alone, I still wasn't like this huge single traveler. Okay. And so that year I went to Vietnam and Thailand, two separate trips alone and did biking trips. Um, and then I climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. By the time I climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, I was 61, but it was really my bigger, better, braver moment. And so my book that I was writing was basically, what's your Kilimanjaro? Mm. You don't have to go climb 19,000, you know, 431 right. feet. But you have to do, what is your Kilimanjaro? Is it getting in a relationship? Is it getting out of one? Is it leaving a career and starting a new one? Is it an entrepreneurial job? Like, are you moving across the country? Are you having a child? What does bigger, better, braver mean to you? And so I didn't name it, What's Your Kilimanjaro? Because I thought nobody's going to read that book unless they actually want to climb right. Kilimanjaro. Right, right, right. Not right. a lot of people that want to do that. So we, so I like, I had a really hard time with the title, um, which is funny because I think that was one of the things the woman in the other, in one of the podcasts of yours that I was listening to, she said, you know, it, it was hard. It's hard to get the title of the book. And it was. Right. And then, so I had a million titles down and everyone yeah. kept saying, just write them down, just write them down. And then yeah. I sat up in the middle of the night once at like two o'clock in the morning, I sat up and I said, bigger, better, braver. And mm -hmm. then that was it. And then conquer your fears, embrace your courage and transform your life. That took a, a ton to get to. But the bigger, better, braver. I loved it right away. Yes. Everyone loved it right away. I have a hat that says it like, you know, right. it's so fun. Yeah. Nice, it's a nice. fun title. I, 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 I need to go back, Nancy, because the way you, you, you threw out there that I climbed Kilimanjaro, like it was no big deal. Hey, I just climbed up. Like, I mean, this is a significant big deal. No question. Was was that something you, you, you aspired to, you wanted to? Where did the idea come from? Yeah, well, a few years earlier, I had read some woman's book, like an Eat, Pray, Love kind of book, and she had this amazing spiritual awakening. Yes. And so I wanted to do that. And for a few years, I tried to get one of my friends to do it with me. Okay. It's not like saying, do you want to go to, you know, South Beach for the weekend? It's a big to do. And you have to be able to train for it. You have to think that you're going to be okay in, you know, altitude, and you have to be able to afford to take the trip. So I didn't find anybody. And then all of a sudden, I got a text or an email from a friend of mine, who said the team in training for leukemia was for the first time they were doing groups going to Kilimanjaro. And I had done a few, I've done like five marathons and a couple of triathlons with team in training. I love it because you're doing something that's for you yes. while you're doing something for other people. It's yes. amazing. Yes. So that was it. I signed up with the California one. Um, even though I live in Colorado, I was living part-time in both. So I didn't really train. I think I did one or two like training rides with them, training hikes with them, but I lived in, in Aspen, Colorado. Like I right. lived in the mountains. Right, so right. I did my own 14ers and I hiked every day with backpack. I was so overtrained that by the time I got to Kilimanjaro, I just, I couldn't even keep, the people couldn't keep up with me. I got my own Sherpas. They're all in their 20s and 30s. I was right. one. I had my own Sherpas. I did my own thing. I, it was amazing. I loved every moment of it. 
So on, on a climb like that, I would imagine that 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 there, there, there's lessons or insights that kind of hit you, or w- were there any that come to mind for you as you're you know ascending on your climb? Well, there's a couple of of interesting things. So basically, I knew I wanted to have a spiritual awakening, and yet you can't like call for a spiritual awakening; it has to just happen. And what really happened for me, I mean, if I go back, I was really happily married for 26 years. And then my husband didn't want to be married anymore. And he married, he, we got divorced. And then he married somebody that was two years older than my sons. And so it was like, really, um, I hit bottom. It definitely was, took away my confidence, my right. You know, I was very other referenced. So if he no longer saw me as this hot, sexy, bright woman, I no longer saw myself that way. Mm. And it took me a really long time to climb back up. So even though I was, you know, already a coach and I, you know, was living a good life and, you know, I, a lot of things have, had happened that were great. I still had to keep proving to myself mm. over and over again, girl, you've got it. Like, you, you don't need him to tell you that. And I think in that moment of seeing the flags at the top of the, you know, we got up at midnight, we started climbing that last climb up. Yep. And um, when I saw those flags at, you know, six o'clock in the morning, I, probably an hour before anybody else, I was crying and I just was like, I got, I got it going on. I can be anything. I am whole all by myself. I don't need anybody. And that was like really amazing. The next part of this story though, is that when we get all the way down, so we climb from 13, no, we climb from 15 to 19 mm-hmm. and down to 10 okay. all in one day. Okay. Wow. And then the next morning you get up and you go all the way down. And in that book that I was, um, talking about with this girl was probably 30 when she had her great spiritual thing. She said she got back to her hotel. She took off all her clothes. She didn't even recognize herself in the mirror because she was emaciated. Mm. So I get home. The first thing I do is I take off my clothes and I look in the mirror and I'm 61 years old and I'm so swollen and cellulite from all of the right. pounding right. that I went from loving myself on the top of the mountain to getting down, looking in the mirror and saying like, Holy crow, like right. that's right. not 12, you right. know? Right. So it just goes to show you that like women feeling good about themselves. It doesn't, it's like in a moment, you've got to keep right. doing things over and over again to keep feeling that, that joy, that self-love, that self-trust, that self-confidence that we deserve. You know, know, I I think that's a really uh, important point you raise. I'm glad you raised that just around the, the, you know, the ups and downs and how, uh, you know, we can feel up here one day and then, you know, something happens that potentially could bring us down. And and, and, and that's really the cycle of life. It really is. We're all, we're going to experience that. And it's, it's whether we choose to stay down or not, or lift ourselves up, which is, again, has always, and I feel it's always been our choice. And yeah. it re- really comes down to whether or not we choose to stay there or not. And, and so I'm really glad that you raised that point. One of the things that I'm a big proponent of is the, the whole idea of, of, of keeping track of your wins or, or your successes, because it's really easy to say, yeah, yeah. But then you can also go, but yeah, I did that. So in your case, I climbed Kilimanjaro, like, you know, and, and I th- those are little things. You know, v- very quickly, I'll share. Um, uh, as, as uh, you know, as a kid, I didn't learn uh, to bike ride. Just never rode a bike as a kid. And it wasn't until my 40s that I got on a bike for the very first time. And I, I, I remember I, I rode everywhere. In fact, Nancy, it was so it was such an exhilarating feeling to even kind of go back to the neighborhood I grew up as a kid and bike ride as an adult as a kid. And, you know, the, the laneways and the side streets and riding at top speed, the, the way you would as a kid is what I was kind of reliving that. And, and, and I remember just kind of craving and wanting more and deciding that I was going to, you know, 
know, jump on my bike and, you know, ride to Niagara Falls, which is, you know, over 100 miles or, you know, in Canada, we're in kilometers, but, you know, you know at least 100 miles plus from where I lived. And it was such... A, a, an exhilarating feeling to kind of get there, and it, and it probably may be similar to you getting your Kilimanjaro. You know, my Kilimanjaro, although that wasn't the plan per se. Right. I, I, I think I think for me, I was kind of just riding this high, going, "Okay, what's next?" You know, maybe maybe the bigger, braver, better, you know, b bigger, braver, uh, bigger, better, braver idea. Where what else can I do? Sort of mindset, right. and and uh, and I just remember getting the end of that, going, "Cool, I did it." What's right. next kind of deal, right? right. So I can yeah. relate to that. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Check, right? I, I lived in Buffalo, so Niagara Falls wasn't that far for us either. Right, right. So there, there you go. And so yeah. uh, the whole idea of, 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 of trying something, going after something, oh, right. uh, taking the risk of something, because uh, uh, I, you know, I, I kind of believe that although we might see it as a risk, the things that we're meant to do, I don't truly believe that they are. Yeah. I think that um, if I have a message mm -hmm. to give to people, yep. it's that nobody gets to a fearless state. And so what happens is that people think successful people do things and they're not afraid. But it's not true. Right. We do things and we are afraid. But we have faith that the universe has our back and that everything happens for us, not to us. So if we fall... It's a stepping stone. It wasn't our time. You know, rejection is project is protection. And I feel that people that are not moving forward in their lives and they're letting fear rule them, they think that other people don't have the same fears. And it's not true. Right. So for me, fear is a driving force for change. Yes. If I am afraid to do something, then I know I have to do it. Right. You're probably on the right path. Yeah. Like my growth is on the other side of that exact thing that I'm sitting here saying, oh, though, that's too big for me. I can't do that. Like that's for other people. It's not. I mm -hmm. will be that other person the moment I step in. That's right. That's right. It was interesting because I one as, as you sort of think about doing more, becoming more, being bigger, being braver. Uh, you know, sometimes the annoying is what holds us back because we just don't know we're being held back from doing those things. And then the other times, it's it's the fear. So I was definitely going to ask about that fear that holds people back. Um, I'm imagining with a lot of your clients, you, you're seeing a lot of that that fear piece. Well, everybody has fear. Everybody has fear. Um, and the imposter syndrome is big and yeah. fear of success and fear of failure mm. are like in the same person. Mm. And those people who have done something really successfully, they have more fear of success and fear of failure than those that didn't because they don't want to be like a one hit pony, right? They, right. they, they don't want that to be their only thing. I've got some really big clients that have like done really big things and they're almost afraid. They're like constipated because they don't want to do something else and fail. Right. They, and yet they hate living on the laurels of that one big thing that they did. It's like, which one, right? <laughs> yeah, they love it because yeah. it made them a lot of money and it made them really famous and they feel really good. But then it's also like it's it's like an anchor around right. their neck, like that right. they they don't want that to be the only thing that they do. Right. So, yes, people have a lot of fears. People are, you know, they want to be invisible. They have beliefs around. See, underneath our fears are also these disempowering beliefs. Yes. So if you have a belief that you need to be invisible, then you also have a fear of being seen. So you don't want to put yourself out there. You don't want to be seen. And so that gets in the way of you taking this big CEO job or being a, a, you know, writing a book and being on podcasts or being right. a speaker, if those fears and those beliefs are underneath it, you have to, you have to embrace them. Yes. See where they came from and take them along with you as you yep. continue on. That's right. That's right. And, 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 and I think it's a really important point, uh, raising that even successful people 
feel the fear, right? You know, fear, no, no one is immune from it. We all experience it and it's what we do with it when it, when it arrives is really right. kind of, which is yeah. our choice, right? Do we yeah. allow it to debilitate us and freeze us and we don't do anything or do we act in spite of? And, and the most successful people are those that act in, yeah. in spite of. But they use that energy to yeah. move them forward instead of keep them on the couch. Right. Right. That's really what it comes down to. Right, right. Yeah, and, and 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 I think if more people understood that and knew that the pe- that, that person that attained this wonderful great thing that I you know, I, I say I can never do. They experience this fear on the way up there. Then that that's that's almost empowering, and I, and I, that's part of the reason why I think it's always so important that we share our stories with one another. Because if you understand someone else's journey a bit better and understand that they face fear, they had doubts, uncertainties, or they doubted themselves or suspicions. You know, it's 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 a bit easier for you to take that first step. Totally, and I mean, when I was training for Kilimanjaro, I did a lot of fearful things. You know, Mm -hmm. I I went to Tony Robbins and I walked on fire and I would go down double black diamond skiing. I had a self arrest. Like you had a, they would make you like fall down the mountain. I I did all these things and everything I did, I would say, well, if you can't do this, you'll never make it to Kilimanjaro. Right. So I was testing myself all the time and I would be able to use that mantra to get me propel me to do more and more and more things. And the more things you do, the easier it gets because it's not like you don't have the fear. It doesn't go away, but you're used to that feeling. It's easier and easier. So like when you were saying, talk about your successes, one of the exercises I have people do is like write down 10 things you've done in your life that are successful. Right. Or 10 things that you were afraid to do, but you did them anyway. Yes. And then you look at that list and you're like, wow, those were some of the best things I ever did. Yeah. And you're like, yes, that's the point. Yep. 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 And and, and chances are when you look at that list, you know, those successes are someone else's fears. Yes. Always. Always. Right. Yeah. That's why even group coaching is so good because people will be like, I can't believe you feel that way too. I'm not alone. That's awesome. Like, Mm -hmm. Awesome that I also have that same fear, right? <laughs> right, 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 right. Uh, I think these are all sort of wonderful steps as we, as we move towards that transformative piece and transform our lives. Um, a big part of transforming our lives is kind of knowing what you want it to be or having at least an idea of, of what you want it to be. What kind of does that process look like to, to kind of get there? Well, you know, I think passion is an issue and gives people, it's like a bad rap for people because not everybody has a passion. Mm. And then a lot of people are like, Oh my God, I'm such a loser. You know, I don't know what I want to do with my life. I don't have any passion. And, you know, I didn't know what I wanted to do since I was born like other people, you know, that like makes it harder for people. And when somebody comes to me and they're stuck or they're not happy, they don't know what they want. I take them through a whole vision work, work, you know, thing where we go through the whole life wheel of career and money and romance and family and spirituality and environment and all those things. And I get them out of their head and into their hearts. So they're in a meditative state. So instead of their ego and all those disempowering beliefs, telling them what they should or shouldn't do, they get quiet enough to hear what their heart wants for them, you know, Mm -hmm. what their soul wants for them, what will make them dance. And that is where the gold is because things will come up and they'll be like, well, you know, I, I really never thought of that, but I really love this. Okay. So let's see how we can start working on that. You know? And again, it's like running a marathon. Nobody's going to go out and run 26 miles in one day. When I train for a marathon, I do one mile and the next week I do a second mile and I all the way up, it's chunking it down to bite size steps that you can be successful with and that's how it is for anything you're going to do you have to chunk it down you have to take one little toe out of your comfort zone at a time and when you don't you know when you don't die or you don't get hit by lightning or something really horrible doesn't happen to you then you take the next step and the next step and then eventually you're going to make it to the marathon 
Sounds like you're talking about being audacious, at Nancy. <laughs> there you go. So I knew it'd be a perfect combination. <laughs> That's exactly it. No, I, but but you you are absolutely right. It, it's it's incremental steps. Uh, it's not you know it's it's not all done in one big shot. You take your time and you move forward. Uh, but I think the key in that is that you are moving forward. You're not right. you're, you're not stopping. You're you're not not taking action. You're you're continually in spite of. You know what? Uh, you know you know you may remember these top. Well, you know through rain, sleet, or snow, the the postman will always deliver, right? Like you're continuing right. making those steps, and you're not letting anything slow you down. And I think if we can adopt that, uh, uh, you know, we'll start to see the winds accumulate. Yeah, and you know, I think about life. I don't want to go back to the the Kilimanjaro, but um, because I actually because I, I live in Colorado, so I do hike mountains every single okay. day. Okay. So I'm very nice. mountain oriented. Yep. But you can either go straight up the mountain, which is quick and really hard and painful, or you take the switchbacks and it's easier, but it takes you a lot longer. Yes. And so I want people to recognize that whenever they they whenever they're out of alignment with where they say they want to go, well, you're on a switchback. You're still going to get there if you don't turn around and go back down the mountain. Gotcha. So if you're always going forward, even if you're taking the switchbacks and you fall off and you fall off your diet and you fall yep. off your training and you fall off whatever, if you get out of alignment with the trajectory of where you say you want to go, mm -hmm. you're still going to get there. Right. Get back on. Don't use it to beat right. yourself up and move forward. Gotcha. Tomorrow's another day and, you know, Got you. No, I, and, and that's a good mindset uh, or approach, rather. Um, I, I love the analogy of just the mountain in general. Now, we're going back to the mountain here. But uh, I love the analogy of that because when you, when you get to the top of the mountain, you're at the peak. You know, it, it's it's like the way I sort of envision it, it, it it's kind of lonely up there. There's not a whole lot going on up there, right? You get there, you're like, okay, we're here. You know, what do you do, right? right. And, and it's always like the now what? And is it, you know, the next mountain, let's say, or the next obstacle? And, and that, again, ties very very much in to the whole, uh, to, to your work around just doing more and becoming more and, and, right. and achieving more. Yeah. And it's not about, it's not about having more, you know, it's not bigger, better, braver. I need a new car. I need a bigger right. house. It's about always growing bigger, better, braver is about growth mindset. That's really what it's about. Mm -hmm. And how do you get there? How do you achieve it? And then also, when you get to the top of that mountain, sit and enjoy it. You yes. know, the juice is in the journey. But once you finally get to the top, really enjoy it. You don't have to look for the next mountain at the moment. But then know that after you've recovered and you've embraced it and you've really enjoyed it, then you get to look around and say, OK, I see another peak over there. Yes. What's next? I love What's it. Next? Yeah, I love it. I love it. I also met your 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 cancer survivor, Nancy, and I wonder if you sort of talk about uh, how that is fed into the work you do, or how that's fortified you now that you're know, being on the other side of, of 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 cancer. Well, I so I had melanoma, and which is a really scary cancer, and it's a deadly cancer. Mm -hmm. um, but I had a very you know I had stage one melanoma, so stage mm -hmm. one melanoma is actually just a big surgery, but you don't have, there's no chemo, there's nothing else. You go every six months for like the rest of your life and be checked. Right. But what it was for me was I, a little thing I didn't say about me is that I'm an over-exerciser. Okay. Um, and so in between my owning the personal training gym and my becoming a life coach, there was a nine year period where I was divorced and I wasn't working and I was just playing and all I was doing was exercising, 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 exercising. Right. And I had been told by um, Paul Check, who's a big time um, trainer that I was burning myself out from the inside out and that I worked out more than his professional athletes. <laughs> and um, I didn't listen to anybody, anybody. I just, this is what I did and I loved it. But when I got melanoma, my son's meditation coach came over to see me and she said, isn't it amazing that the universe had to stop you in your tracks by giving you melanoma in your leg and now you can't even walk. Mm. And at the time I thought like, 
this lady is friggin' crazy. Right. And she thinks <laughs> right. that the universe brought me. Right. But I'm telling you that that's truly what did happen. Right. That you get signs. The universe is there for you. It gives you little signs. If you don't catch on to the little signs, yes. it gives you bigger and bigger and bigger signs. Yes. Yes. So I needed the bigger sign. And now I literally go through my life saying, my eyes are open. I'm paying attention. Yes. I don't need another big lesson. Give me the little ones. Yep. I will learn. Yep. Yep. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it is. It is important. I think sometimes we get sort of caught up in life and all sorts of things coming away, and and we just it causes us to miss those signs. But uh, as you pointed out, they do reoccur and they come back, and we're given lots of opportunities to see them. It's whether or not we acknowledge them. them, hear them, or see them. Right, 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 or hear them. Right. So, <laughs> so I have rules for myself. Like I will only do two things in one day in okay. terms of exercise, but. That I used to do like, you know, totally. I used to do three things almost every day. Wow! And now, and now I hold myself to two. Got you, got you. There you go, there you go. That's a nice little. little <laughs> I have some, high. I have some boundaries. There you go, boundaries. Well, well, I was. It's funny. I'm, I'm glad you said that because I've also heard you describe yourself as a boundary coach as well. So that's a nice little segue uh, into that work. So I wonder if you sort of can describe what that is, because uh, I think self-care kind of weaves into that as well. Yes. So boundaries are all about what you will and will not tolerate okay. in yourself and in other people. What is okay and what's not okay. And how to say yes to you and no to other people. Because what happens is that so many of us are people pleasers, conflict avoiders, uh, overdoers, right. overgivers, right. all comes from shadow beliefs. And boundary coaching helps people learn how to set boundaries, how to ask for what they need, how to make self-care a priority, how to know that selfish is not a bad word and selfless is not a good word. Right. Because selfless, there's selfless, no self, right? You disappear. You're not even in the conversation. And when your needs are not being met, it's usually because you don't know how to ask for them. And it's usually because you don't even know what they are. Right. So you have to get comfortable saying, what do I want? What do I need? What works for me? And only say yes when it's a full yes. Anything other than a full yes, you should be saying no. I'm not saying no to you. I'm saying no to this activity. Yep. You know, maybe another day. I wish I could. I can't. There's a million ways to say no yep. without just, you know. Flat out saying no. Yeah. Without it coming across like the like you're saying no to the other person. Right. Right. And so it's all about self-care and self-honoring and what is the most self-honoring thing you can do for yourself today and making sure you do it. And then it's about maintaining boundaries with yourself. So like I have a boundary that I don't do more than two exercises a day. Right. Other people might have a boundary that they're going to exercise every day or meditate every day or do a gratitude journal every day right. or, you know, not have more than two drinks in a day or say to your boss, you know, I really need to be home by seven o'clock. Would you be willing to not give me new work after five o'clock at night, you know, so I can get home and have dinner with my kids right. or, you know, say to your partner, would you be willing to put the dishes in the dishwasher? I feel disrespected when you leave dishes in the sink. Would you be willing to put them in the dishwasher? Got you. That's a boundary yeah. script. I feel X when you do Y, would you do Z? Right. I, I, I like that because it's, it's, you're, you're tapping into your feelings. You're making, you're connecting directly to your feelings. And I think that helps us own it a bit better. Right. As, uh, yeah, it's, especially it's when, from the other person, yes. I'm just not saying, you know, I can't believe you left the dishes in the sink. Right. 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 What I'm saying is I feel it's how I feel when I see them, I'm not really making you wrong. But I don't like seeing them in the dishwasher, yes. in the sink. Yeah. And, and, and that, that takes practice, Nancy. It takes a lot of practice, particularly, and, and sometimes it's not even 
us, it's the people around us who we, in some cases, like for example, as a parent, if you you know you set things a certain way with your children to almost retrain them to now that I'm taking care of myself first and these are my boundaries because that's not yeah. their way of life. Right, and it's good for them to see. It's actually good for them to see that you are a human being with your own needs and wants and desires, and it's yeah. not just about them, right? Yeah. 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 No, I love it. I love it. I'm. I'm glad. I'm glad you got to that as well. Now, see, this has been a, a really great chat, and I really appreciate the time that you take to be in here. And I, and one last thing I just wanted to ask you before we, we kind of get on out of here with respects to uh, the, again the whole concept of, of doing more and becoming more and uh, and, and being our, our, our bold audacious selves because essentially that's what the goal is. We're working towards. And and for those individuals who you know are are, are, are trying to figure out sort of where that start. What would you say is kind of the starting point to getting to that place? Uh, what's the first thing that they should do? Yeah, the, like the story. Yeah, what kind of what, what what should they be? Where, where is their starting point? What I is the I think you? you need to pick one area in your life that you want to change, mm. and then see what what is the story you're telling yourself for why it's not different. What are the excuses that you're living in that are keeping you from doing that? And then see if you can unravel those excuses and move forward anyway. And get comfortable with being uncomfortable because it's short-term discomfort. Yes. And most people don't want short-term discomfort, but for some reason, they're okay with long-term discomfort. <laughs> right? It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think what happens is that long-term discomfort is just adopted as a way of life and it's accepted as the norm and you can't yeah. see anything different, right? Right. <laughs> so, you know, listen to the excuses that you're using because there's always some truth in those excuses. But at the end of the day, they're just excuses. You can, if you really want to, make the changes. And so figure out if you can what the disempowering beliefs are that are holding you back. If you can't figure out those, listen to the excuses that you're using. You know, somebody might say, I don't have enough money. I want to go on a vacation. I don't have enough money. Well, if you start to put $25 away a week, eventually you will have enough money. And so the, eventually that excuse won't hold water. But if you don't start putting the money away, it's always going to just be an excuse that you use and you're never going to take the trip. Absolutely. Taking that first step. Another piece that you touched on a couple times uh, that I appreciate and I'm highlighting here is the idea of getting out of the comfort zone or, as you just said moments ago, be, get comfortable with being uncomfortable because right. when we're uncomfortable, we're forcing ourselves into something new. Right. The last man in a race still beats the man on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, I like that one. That's a great note to close on. Nancy, right. if, I, if, I, if, I, if, I, if our listeners wanted to uh, learn more about your work or catch up with you, where, where, where can we send them? Uh, Nancy Picard, lifecoach.com has everything. I have mm -hmm. um, my book, all my courses. You can get a free call with me. Um, there's a 20% code off of a course that I've got out, out right now and a free chapter of my book. Like, there's just so many things. Nice, nice. Well, that's fantastic. I really do appreciate uh, you being here with me on the podcast. And I, again, I, I'm, I, oftentimes, you know, at the end of these conversations, I sort of think about, you know, what I would, you know, take my, myself and, you know, apply my own life because it, 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 I'm fortunate enough to be able to have engaged in so many wonderful conversations with, with and, and lead, received with all these great insights. And again, for me, the whole idea of just that, the whole comfort zone is a big one, getting out of that and uh, challenging yourself. So, uh, uh, so you reflect email me back and let me know what your Kilimanjaro is. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll definitely put some thought into that, but absolutely, because it, it is, you know, I, it's, it's something that we all can strive and do more and, and become more, and, uh, but we have to face it first, right? You have to figure it out. Yeah, yeah. for sure, for sure. Nancy, thank you for being here. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. back we are here on the podcast and i want to thank nancy for being here and helping to open up our understanding of the harmful impacts of self-limiting beliefs and how they can hold us back from living a bigger better and braver life 
on that note, I'd also encourage you to pick up a copy of her book as well of the same title, Bigger, Better, and Braver. Uh, I think Nancy did a wonderful job uh, in, in really helping not only just your clients and individuals in general, and I commend you on all your work and, and the success you had empowering others to live that bigger, better, braver life that we all talk about here. Uh, you know, when I think uh, about my conversation, reflect on that I had with Nancy, she really left us with a lot of great things and points to ponder. But if there's just one thing that I would take from my chat with her, it would be this. Limiting our false beliefs are, are, are hazardous to our overall growth, de development, and well-being because they hold us back from living a fulfilling life of abundance and that, that's a life that we all were meant to live. Essentially, if we change or dissolve those beliefs, especially our false beliefs, we can change our behavior and ultimately make a significant change to our life. It starts with analyzing our existing thoughts and determining which beliefs are false and which ones are grounded in, in some form of truth. The more of these beliefs that you can zero in on, the more you can challenge, question, and ultimately eliminate. And that's the pathway of living an audacious life. Hey, listen, if you haven't registered for email notifications of the podcast, please know that you can do so simply by heading over to bestaudaciouslife.com. All you've got to do is enter in your email address and you will be connected. It's just that easy. Uh, we've sadly come to the end of another episode of the Audacious Living Podcast. And as always, got to give a big time shout out to our listeners, uh, those lovers of audaciousness. Thank you for your ongoing and tremendous uh, support. It is so, so much appreciated. Uh, if you're a fan of the podcast, I'd encourage you uh, to help. You know, we love ratings. And so certainly a five-star rating would be awesome. Appreciate any comments or uh, any well wishes that you have for the podcast. That also is appreciated. So thank you in advance. Until next time, stay safe, be kind, show love to one another, and be audacious. You've been listening to the Audacious Living Podcast, hosted by Audley Stevenson. If you enjoyed what you heard, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Until next time, be audacious.